Hey everybody, what's up? Chad Wesley-Smith here for Juggernaut Training Systems. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about finding your optimal frequency. This is gonna build on a video from a couple weeks ago about finding your MRV, your maximum recoverable volume. So if you haven't watched that video yet, stop, click the button somewhere around here and go back and watch that video on finding your MRV because a lot of what I talk about there is going to be referenced in this video and if you don't know what I'm talking about then you're going to be a little bit lost. So training frequency and we're specifically for most of this video referring to overloading frequency though we'll address technical sessions and light sessions as well. Uh, we're looking at how often are you training the lifts hard um, and for the purposes of this video we're going to be talking about within the context of a seven day week though it's certainly possible that you either compress your week or expand your week that you know there's no reason in program design that you need to be constrained to uh, you know the regular calendar to just Sunday through Saturday and, and seven days there's a lot of ways that you can manipulate it but the examples I'm going to be giving here are referring to uh, within a seven day week so first to help determine what frequency is going to be best for you we need to understand what happens when you train and a lot of this is going to tie into the principle of sra stimulus recovery adaptation so basically you introduce the stimulus of training and that generates fatigue through muscular damage inflammation stress to the joints uh, neural fatigue and then over time you recover and adapt to that stimulus that was introduced and ideally adapt to have a little bit better fitness, a little bit higher performance than you did previously. So the more significant the stimulus you introduce is, uh, probably the, the deeper the fatigue is gonna be, the greater fatigue is gonna be generated, and uh, likely the longer it's gonna take to recover from that. So you can generate greater stimulus and, and more fatigue with it, by lifting heavier weights, relatively heavier for you, or absolutely heavier, maybe you compared to your training partner, uh, doing more volume, and as well as smaller adjustments to it. Those are the, the two big things that are gonna create, create a difference. Uh, heavier weights, more volume, training closer to failure or to failure. Uh, and then you know small adjustments like the tempo of the training can also uh, cause more or less fatigue. So in an effort to find your best frequency, and I stress that it's about your best frequency because all the time people ask me what on its face seems like a very simple question, Chad, how many times a week should I squat? And they want me to, to tell them two times a week or three times a week or whatever times a week is best, but it's not quite that simple and I would be doing a disservice to all of you to tell you that two times a week is best or three times a week is best or like Max Ada used to do 30 times a week is best because what is best for you today might not be best in six months or in a year or in five years. What's best for you might not be best for your training partner or vice versa. Uh, and what's best for you when you're 24 weeks out from competition isn't going to be the same answer necessarily as what's best from uh, four weeks out from competition. So I want to help you understand the principles behind this so you can make the best decision for yourself today and for the whole of your training career. So this idea of finding the right frequency deals with this concept of session rest session paradigm. And I'll show you some graphs to, to help illustrate this is as you generate this fatigue and then you recover and adapt to it that right at the top of adaptation before there's any sort of fitness decay or technique decay then you'd introduce another stimulus, another training session, uh, and start the process all over again and link those all up so perfectly. What happens though is it ends up being a little bit more complicated than this you know, nice looking graph here that because different factors have different length SRA curves and this shape it, it, that I'm referring to as SRA curve right here, stimulus, fatigue, recovery, adaptation. St stimulus, fatigue, recovery, adaptation. Because different lifts, different physical qualities have different length SRA curves, it's not quite so cut and dry to line them all up like this. So we have to understand factors that affect SRA curve length. So first off, the lift that you're doing. 
Deadlifts generate more fatigue than squats. Squats generate more fatigue than bench press. I'm referring there to, to doing lifts with the same relative intensity for the same relative volume. So if you went and did five sets of five at 75% in each of those lifts, the amount of fatigue generated from the deadlift is going to take you a bit deeper down in that SRA curve than it would for the bench press. And that's because it's going to be absolutely more weight, even though it's the relative intensity is the same. You're using a lot more musculature in the deadlift. You're probably moving the bar further. Um, so all of those things need to be taken into account. That's why generally the bench with the shortest SRA curve can be trained the most frequently compared to the deadlift with the longest SRA curve being trained the least frequently. How is it loaded? The heavier it is relatively, you know, light deadlifts, shorter SRA curve than heavier deadlifts. Absolute loading of it, you know, a lift that you can go really heavy on, maybe like a three inch sumo block pull, even though the range of motion is shorter than pulling from the floor, the absolute weight being used is probably gonna generate a longer SRA curve uh, as well as because there's a high degree of neural fatigue along with that. The closer you train to failure, the more fatigue is gonna be generated. And then what system are you training? Technique. So the technical qualities of the lift adapt very quickly, but decay very quickly as well, a very short SRA curve. So if we were to use an example outside of powerlifting, like uh, the sport of golf, you know, professional golfers, PGA golfers, they're playing 18 holes in the morning, 18 holes in the afternoon, and if they were to, to, you know, maybe only play every Tuesday and Friday with their buddies, they wouldn't be professional golfers because their technique of their swing is so fine-tuned that they would become rusty in that short time. Or if you're like me, and maybe you play golf, you know, every six months or a year, then you're just always rusty. But because you're always rusty, you don't even really know how bad you are. So, but if you were playing frequently, you'd be able to tell the difference. And you can, you've probably felt that same Thing. If you take you know, an extended time off of training, even you know, go on vacation for, for two weeks or something and come back and you haven't squatted or haven't deadlifted, it feels a little off. So technique is a very short SRA curve. Other side of things, neural fatigue is a very long SRA curve. When you do a meet uh, and you lift to absolute maximum, hopefully weights that you have never lifted before, and you go to train the next week, even though the volume of a meet nine singles plus the warmups is incredibly low. The neural fatigue is very high because the weights are so heavy. So when you go to train the next week, probably, hopefully it should be that everything feels very heavy, even though the weights may be light. So balancing all of these different factors against each other, that's really the, the trick, the magic of finding your optimal frequency. So that's just an example of the red being the bench press, the blue being the squat, the green being the deadlift. Uh, you know, these are not exact time parameters. A lot of this is just going to be used to illustrate the idea, but you can see the bench. These are all done at the same relative intensity for the example. So like five sets of five at 75% bench generates fatigue. It recovers faster because it doesn't have as much fatigue to decay, to decay a little bit longer for the squat, a little bit longer for the deadlift. All right, so we have some known frequency ranges, and these are pretty big ranges. You can see for the squat, I'm normally writing programs for the squat where people train uh, overloading session for the squat between one and four times per week. For the bench, one to five times per week. The deadlift, half a time to maybe three overloading sets in the, in the deadlift. And where you fall in that range is gonna be determined by you, your individual differences. So this next screen, assessing the athlete. Again, if you haven't watched the MRV video, this is all addressed more in depth in there. So stop, go back, watch that, do the assessment. You go through, circle all this stuff. It'll explain it all in depth there. I don't wanna re-explain myself for 10 minutes in this video. So go back, finding your MRV video, do the athlete assessment because this is the stuff that's gonna dictate you know, what your best frequency is, or at least what your best starting point for uh, training frequency is gonna be. So as we go through this, still referring to the examples from the MRV, our red circles are for Marissa Inda, female, lightweight, very short, very high strength, very advanced in her 40s, average diet, average sleep, low outside training stress, no performance enhancing drugs, exceptional 
recovery ability, historical recovery ability. That really just kind of means very good genetics. And our blue circles for Brandon Allen, male, super heavyweight, tall, very strong, very advanced. Uh, he might be in his 30s now, but 29, 30 years old. Diet, stress, all that stuff. So what we're gonna do, and this is back to Marissa's, is finding the frequency compared to our video on finding your MRV, it's a little bit more artistic. So essentially what we're doing is this is just a trend line creating an average between Marissa's qualities. Now Marissa is very far to one side with her strength and, and experience, well very far to the other side with gender, height, and weight. So her trend line is gonna take her through about two to three time a week squatting, two probably three time a week benching, and two time a week deadlifting as you can see up here at the top. Where Brandon's trend line is gonna give him two time a week squatting, two time a week benching, and one, maybe one and a half times a week in the deadlift. The next stuff I'm gonna reference, again, it goes back to the Finding Your MRV video. You need to watch that to understand this. So we had established MRV ranges for Marissa and Brandon that we found in that other video, and now we're gonna decide how to divide up that MRV over the frequency that we've now found for them. So just on the previous slide, we saw that Marissa is gonna squat two to three times a week, bench two, probably three times a week, deadlift twice a week. Taking her MRVs from the Finding Your MRV video, dividing up 20 overloading sets of work dedicated to improving the squat, 24 sets in the bench, 14 sets in the deadlift. So a couple different ways we can divide this up. You need to understand how many days a week your athlete is gonna train. So I gave two examples for Marissa here. Six day a week training and four day a week training. She still does the same total workload uh, with the same training frequency, just divided up a little bit different. So you can see on her six day a week plan, this is her biggest squat session here, 10 sets, followed by on, on the day two, 12 sets of bench. Day three is her biggest deadlift session, doing 10 of her 14 total sets, and just a small squat session to complement that. Some more benching on day four, very small session, as it's sandwiched between a, a bunch of hard workouts here. Then our more moderate squat session with our small deadlift session and then a moderate bench, bench session. And here in the four day a week split, same, you know, the same workouts exist, they're just shifted around. Uh, you know, for someone who has high MRVs like, like this, you may be better suited to, to more frequent, smaller training sessions, but you also have to take into account the athlete's you know, schedule. Do they have time to train six times a week? Uh, can they do you know, six, shorter sessions or three or four very long sessions better suited for them. In a situation like this with the four day a week training, doing 10 sets of squats, four sets of bench variation, four sets of deadlift variations, that's gonna be not only a long workout, a very, very challenging workout. So if the athlete doesn't have the special work capacity to after doing 10 sets of squatting variations, get some level of quality work done in the bench and deadlift, maybe this option isn't realistic. And the way that, uh, the reason that I do this and I, I have bigger sessions and smaller sessions is to allow the athlete to just put greater attention to their, to their harder workouts. So like this 10 sets of squats work, workout, first day of the week, they're fresh, very important workout for her. This four day, this four set workout here after the deadlift, it might be a smaller exercise like belt squats, um, maybe leg press or hack squats. It's actually gonna serve some to help her recover from this 10 set workout, but likely gonna allow her, you know, her average intensity and just the quality of her work to be higher on average than if we put all 14 sets over here or 10 sets here and 10 sets here. Those 10 set workouts, as you get into sets, you know, seven, eight, nine, 10, the quality of the work that they can do might just degrade or they might have to choose smaller exercises. Remember uh, when I'm talking about what exercises take up the MRV, it's of course squat, bench, and deadlift and their variations, as well as any other exercise that's sufficiently stimulating to drive adaptation. And I know that's sort of a, a big nebulous answer, but it also depends a little bit on by phase. 
So this 10 sets of squats, yeah, it could just be 10 sets of high bar back squats, or it could be six sets of high bar squats and four sets of front squats, or it could be, you know, three sets of high bar squats, four sets of front squats, and three sets of leg press. As I trend towards smaller and smaller exercises, less stimulating, less fatiguing exercises, like you know, front squat less stimulating than high bar back squat, leg press less than front squat, lunges would be less than leg press. Some of those exercises maybe shouldn't count quite the same way towards the MRV. That's a, a discussion for another day. You know, should lunges count the same as, as high bar squats? Probably not. And we don't want to get into a situation where the workouts are so big, so many sets per workout to fulfill your MRV that you end up doing a lot of the smaller exercises because they're just not as effective. So that's why I choose to do it this way, uh, bigger and smaller workouts so we can still have, so we can still choose relatively bigger exercises to have just a higher uh, like average intensity, higher average quality of work being done. There you can see the same uh, type of layout with Brandon. His established MRV is much lower because he is so big, he's lifting such heavy weights. Uh, every set he does is extremely stimulating, extremely fatiguing. So he has low MRV, seven sets in the squat, 11 in the bench, four in the deadlift, and a little bit lower frequency to divide that over. When we get into things like deadlift one to two times a week, you could refer to that as one and a half times a week as well. I often do that. And the idea that I mean by one and a half times uh, a week or one and a half sessions is one big session you know, of, of clearly overloading exercises. Like for the deadlift, for example, deadlifts, block pulls, where the half session might be a smaller exercise like a RDL or vert pull, um, you know, very heavy back raises, even something like reverse hyper could, uh, could count towards that half session. So it's, it's still exercises that are overloading for the deadlift that are going to develop the deadlift, but they, they are on the less fatiguing side of things. So that's what I mean by a half session, or if we look at deadlift one to two times a week, it could also mean that one week you deadlift with two overloading sessions and the next week you have one overloading session. That's also a possibility as well. All right, so what we're going to look at here next is uh, maybe a, a more practical way that those SRA curves are going to line up together. So again, blue is going to be in the squat, red, the bench, and green will be the deadlift. So this is an example of uh, the same, the six day per week frequency that we showed for Marissa. So this first blue curve is that 10 set squat workout. So it generates quite a bit of fatigue and it's starting to trend back up where on Wednesday she has that small four set squat workout. So it's going to drive a little bit more fatigue. Uh, those small workouts, especially depending on exercise selection, will actually have some recovery benefit as well because it's going to drive blood into the same muscles that were fatigued and that's that has a benefit. So you can see the 10 sets dips really deep where this four sets doesn't generate near as much fatigue. So it's recovering and adapting. And then on Friday, we introduce another workout that uh, I think it was a, a six or eight set workout there. So again, some fatigue is generated and she starts recovering and adapting. So when she gets to month back to Monday to do again, this 10 set workout, or maybe now it's a 12 set workout if we're in hypertrophy, uh, or it could be an eight set workout if we we're in strength, but with heavier weight, she's now recovered and adapted to above her previous fitness level. What if we were to just do this 10 set workout and then no other overloading sessions throughout the week? That's going to be this dotted line here and you can see it trends up and she recovers and adapts, but that fitness might not stay with her. And again, you know, the, the, these lines I'm drawing are not, are not precise. These are not exact rates of fitness. Uh, and fatigue decay. This is just to illustrate the, the concept uh, of this. But even though she's going to recover and adapt, that fitness might start to fall off. So what if she was to do a bigger workout and take all of her MRV and put it into one week? That would be this dotted line, 20 set workout. You know, extremely fatiguing, really drives the fatigue down there. 
and maybe by the end of the week she's recovered and adapted and ended up with slightly improved qualities. But, and this is a big but caveat to both of these dotted lines, is our technical SRA. All right, as I mentioned before, technique SRA is a very short curve. So though it, it can be, you, you do the workout and you learn something about your technique and maybe it improves, if you don't practice that again, pretty soon it's gonna start to fall off. And of course, technique is a big part of fitness for powerlifting, your readiness to lift the heaviest weights possible. So here, this line is gonna represent our technical SRA for the squat. We introduce that stimulus, your technique improves, then you don't train, you don't train, you don't train, you don't train, because you're only doing one session a week in both of these examples. The 10 sets on one day are all 20 sets in one day. So actually here at the end of the week, your, SR, your technique might, may have, at, at best, is probably just as good as it was previously. It may have actually gotten a little bit worse, especially depending on how long you've been lifting. If you've only been squatting for six months or a year, let's say, and you only squat once a week, well, <laughs> you squat one out of every seven days, that's gonna be like you know, one fiftieth of, uh, of your career, one forty-fifth of your career off has been spent not squatting. You know, if you've been training for 15 years, yeah, then, then, taking, then squatting once a week is not gonna be that big of a deal because your technique is so solidified at that point. So especially as newer beginner lifters, more frequent exposure to the lifts, even if they're very light sessions, is gonna be very valuable because it's gonna help your uh, technique SRA look a bit more like this. So this is back to, to the layout we actually used for Marissa, her 10 set workout. So this is her fatigue and fitness at the bottom. And then the dots are her technical SRA curve. So even though you know, the technique maybe falling off a little bit. She trains again. It's just above where it was before. Now it improves a little bit again. She trains again. It goes up a little bit again. So now when she comes back to this next workout on Monday, her technique is better here than it was the previous Monday. And that's going to allow her to keep lifting more weight, doing more quality sets of work and trending up over the long term. This would be an example of you know, what maybe two workouts a week would look like. Uh, so these are two 10 set workouts instead of what we did was 10, four, six. So 10, four, six is the bottom graph. 10 and 10 is the top graph. Is, is doing more frequency, you know, necessarily better for everyone? No, probably, probably not, depending on the length of this SRA curve. And there's a lot more things that go into uh, you know, figuring out what that length may actually be than just me drawing somewhat arbitrary lines on, on the screen. But again, this is just to, to illustrate the point. Technique SRA, yeah, if you, you train again here, technique might be fine. It might be slightly improving, maybe not quite as fast. So you have to take into account your special work capacity. Can you get through 10 good sets of, of big stimulating exercises per session? as well as taking into account all the other lifts because it's not just the squat, it's squat, bench, and deadlift, balancing them all uh, with each other. So now looking at the bench press, we have that first bench press workout, 12 sets. So it generates quite a bit of fatigue, biggest workout of the week. It's not as far down as the squat was, which was you know, more like down here. Then she's starting to recover, start, starting to adapt, introduces the second small session there on Thursday little bit of fatigue generated from that, recovering and adapting. Then the eight set workout on Saturday. And by the time she comes back to the first workout of the week, the following Tuesday, we've adapted to above our previous abilities. And that's, that's what we're looking for. This is again, the idea if we only did the one workout per week, you'd recover and adapt, but then that fitness is going to start to fall off, particularly in the bench press. Uh, particularly for female lifters, smaller weight class male lifters, less experienced lifters, because the upper body is less muscular than the lower body and you're not walking around on your hands all day, uh, it just loses fitness faster. So you start to have fitness decay over time. That's kind of a look at the technical SRA curve. 
uh, because of the technical SRE curve, this, this fitness, uh, this line of fitness on the one workout per week may, may actually end up a bit lower uh, than, it, than it is. All right, and here is our, our look at the deadlift. Really big workout, 10 sets uh, of overloading work for the deadlift, ton of fatigue generated from that. So then we're putting just a smaller, a significantly smaller workout. This is 10 sets, this one is just four sets. So still some fatigue is generated, but we are gonna have a longer time to uh, recover before the next, the workout Wednesday. And you know, as, as I think about it, this green line maybe should actually come up here and be recovered a bit more on Monday or Tuesday and then kind of flat line, or potentially, you know, if it wasn't perfect planning, fall off a little bit. Uh, you know, and when all these things get taken into account together, that would be the, just the one workout per week technique SRA from only doing one workout per week. And as we put it all together, the blue line and the green line, those are gonna affect each other a bit more. So that's why I say this green line, as it trends up here, it probably should come up a little bit more here and then kind of flatten off before it gets to Wednesday. But hopefully this is helping illustrate the idea of how all the lifts work in conjunction with each other uh, and some of the benefits to sort of undulating or modulating your work throughout the week. So again, why do I like to undulate the sessions? Uh, I think that it, it allows you to manage fatigue through the week so that your bigger sessions, your heavier, higher priority sessions can be just that. They can be heavier, they can have more volume, they can be with bigger exercises or a greater proportion of those bigger, more overloading exercises, and you can prepare yourself mentally a bit more for them. So when you have that small workout, you know, three, four sets after you deadlift, you, you can kind of, th there's never a day where you can't just get through two or three sets or whatever that number is for you, uh, but you're still able to build up your volume throughout the week that way. Uh, you're able to still develop your technique that way through more frequent exposures to the exercises. And you can further create these undulations and better manage um, fatigue by not just manipulating uh, volume and intensity, but also through exercise selection. So if we were to back up maybe to uh, this bench press idea for, for Marissa, this first workout, let's say that's gonna be the competition bench press you know, the majority of, of the 10 sets of the competition bench press. And that generates a ton of fatigue. This second small workout, not only could it be smaller in terms of um, the volume being done, just four overloading sets, but if we were to choose an exercise that doesn't lend itself to overloading as well, maybe like the feet up bench press where you just can't go as heavy, you could still have a, a hard, quote unquote, hard workout uh, you know, hard, re high relative intensity for that exercise and feel like you're doing really important work and it is important and gonna be beneficial to you, but four sets, even at a higher relative intensity of feet up bench press probably isn't gonna be quite as fatiguing as a similar workout of the same relative intensity would be of competition bench press or of something like a two board press or bench with a slingshot, exercises that lend themselves to greater overloading. So you can be kind of clever and strategic in your exercise selection to further be able to manage fatigue and modulate, undulate these sessions throughout the week. All right, so the last thing to address is how does frequency change by phase? So the, the chart that we used earlier, drawing that trend line to find the frequency for Brandon and Marissa for our example, uh, those work really well for hypertrophy and strength, which generally have uh, the same overloading frequency. Though as you get into strength because uh, the neural SRA, which is a long SRA curve, is gonna get involved a bit more, you may need to be modulating or undulating uh, sessions through exercise selection a bit more. So not only having you know, the smaller workload, but also in a less overloading exercise to allow your heavy days uh, to be even heavier uh, and be done with the more, more of the competition exercises. Though when you get to peaking, the neural SRA curve gets particularly long there because you're lifting the heaviest weights, 85% plus, 90% plus, a lot of fatigue being generated. And if you try and do that 
too frequently, you're just not going to be able to lift the weights you need to lift. So very often what I like to do in peaking is turn one of those overloading sessions that we were doing in strength and hypertrophy into a technical session. And the tech, the technical session or technique session is going to be very low volume, probably five to 10 sets of one to two reps at a weight that is, is going to vary a lot by athlete, depending on their experience. But the way that I, I like to describe it is the weight that you can, the lightest weight that you can feel your technique at. So let's say you can squat 315 pounds and you put, put 135 on the bar. You can probably do those reps with 135 and it's not going to generate any fatigue unless you, you know, do a set of 40 or something, but, uh, it's not going to generate any fatigue, but you can't really tell, you know, am I too far forward in my foot? Am I too far back? You know, where are my knees? Is my back angle staying correct? Because the weight is too light for you to be able to feel your technique. So of course, be as mindful as you can uh, with, with every set that you do, but you want to find that weight. So maybe for the 315 squatter, it's 225 or 250 or whatever it is the you want to find the lightest weight that you can tell I executed my technique perfectly or less than perfectly at and that's going to be the weight that you do your technical sessions at it's probably somewhere between 30 percent maybe up to 70 or 75 percent I know that's a really big range but the more advanced you are as a lifter the lower percentage you should probably be able to feel your technique at because you have a lot more experience. You should be a lot more in tune with what you're doing. Also, that's important because 70% of a beginner's weights just isn't that heavy. So it's just not that fatiguing for me when I was squatting, you know, in the mid 900 pounds, if I was to have to try and do a technical session with, you know, 70%, like 650, that would generate quite a bit of fatigue. Uh, whether, you know, maybe not very much neural fatigue, but muscular fatigue and stress on my joints and tendons and ligaments. Uh, plus it would have just been a huge pain in the ass to do that multiple times per week. But I felt that I was so in tune with my technique that I was able to do technical sessions in the squat with just 170 kilos, 374 pounds. So like 30, 35% of my max. And that's what you should be striving for with those technical sessions. Here's just a, a look at what the a strength split might look like. And this is th two to three time a week squatting. Let's call it two and a half. This would be a very small session, two time per week benching and two or 1.5 times per week deadlifting and how we adjust and take this same frequency and change it in peaking by introducing technique sessions throughout the week. And again, those technique sessions are going to be really valuable to not only, you know, help improve technique, which is a, one of the primary goals of peaking, developing technical prowess, but they're also going to help uh, serve a bit as recovery tools by pumping some blood into the muscles, the exact same muscles that are, are sore and fatigued from the overloading sessions. All right, so there is a lot of information for you on uh, determining frequency. Again, these charts can help you find a good sort of jumping off point, and then you got to observe you know, take, take careful notes about your training, communicate with athletes that you coach, see how they, they're feeling. Is it too much work? Is it not enough work? If, if it's kind of right on the border, you can further modulate things through exercise selection, bigger sessions, smaller sessions. But hopefully this gave you a lot of good information uh, that you can take and apply to your training right now so you can develop better techniques, so you can do more quality work, and you can get stronger, faster if you want to learn more about this stuff. Of course, subscribe to the Juggernaut Train Systems YouTube channel, the best lifting content on the internet, and check out my book, uh, Powerlifting Program Design Manual, where I go in depth with all this information to help you understand how to build programs for yourself, for your athletes, athletes of all types, and to build successful programs for a lifetime of training. So go check those out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.